this video, I want to talk about IEX and is IEX good or bad for the markets? So IEX, for you guys that don't know, is an exchange uh, currently. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of IEX for you guys that don't know too much about it and then give my opinion if it's good or bad for the markets. So the overview is IEX is an exchange. It was created by Brad uh, Katsuyama in uh, June 17, 2016. So why would someone want to make an, a new exchange if there's a couple already? So Brad uh, Katsuyama, he knew that high frequency traders had advantages in other markets or other exchanges or dark pools and he wanted to make an exchange where it would make the, the playing field the same for everyone for all type of traders so he wanted to make an exchange where nobody had an advantage over someone else and currently that's how it is in in other exchanges and dark pools high frequency traders do have advantages with certain order types they can jump in the queue and trade faster or buy or sell faster than others and Brad didn't want this. He wanted an exchange where it was fair to everyone and that high frequency traders wouldn't have an advantage. So how do they do this? How, how do they not allow high frequency traders to have an advantage? So what they do is in their, in their trading engine, they pretty much have a 38 mile long coil uh, optical fiber cable. And this employs a 350 microsecond delay. So they're technically broadcasting stale pricing. So what that's what is pretty much a 350 microsecond delay in the market. So you're not getting your information up to date. And that's the issue that I have with IEX. Everything that he stands for, you know, I could agree with. And yeah, sometimes high frequency traders have a advantage, but the fact that you're broadcasting so pricing is not really good for the markets, I believe. But other things that IEX does is, you know, they, they refuse to pay for order flow. Uh, they only have a limited number of order types. So that's a good thing because for the regular investor, for regular people, we only know a couple order types. And there's so many order types in different exchanges. And these are the order types that high frequency trading firms use to, to take an advantage uh, to buy and sell equities. Uh, they're charging fixed fees on most orders and they're ensuring market pricing data arrives at external points of preference or of presence simultaneously. So pretty much everybody's getting their data simultaneously and there's a slight delay in market pricing to all customers. So there is no co-location. And what Brad is doing is, it is great, but I do think as of right now, and this could change, in my opinion, can change, but I don't think it's so great for the markets. And, and I will tell you right now, and it's because they're broadcasting sell pricing. I, I like comp competition. Uh, we have bats that are edge. We have dark pools. We have ECNs, which are electronic uh, communication networks. And it's pretty much, I can sell my order. I can, even me as a person, I can trade with other brokers with ECNs. And, and there's so much competition that has started. And this, this is, I feel this is great uh, for, for competition, for the markets, and for us to keep on uh, expanding our knowledge and trading and, you know, making money. Uh, but what happens with them broadcasting still prices? Well, I mean, there's institutions that are supporting this. And then the, the issue becomes, uh, and these institutions are users of midpoint liquidity. So what happens when these dark pools and midpoint crossing facilities, you know, on exchanges, when IEX is broadcasting sell prices? Well, every single midpoint cross is therefore not a midpoint average at the time of trade. So there's certain limit orders like midpoint crossing where you'll have the midpoint. And when you have this exchange that is broadcasting sell pricing, that midpoint average will change and this can be bad for capital markets. Uh, so like, you know, 
even even if you have a crash, let's say you have a crash and you have it at this exchange that's 350 microseconds behind, if you send a buy or a sell, and what if that price changes so fast because of the crash that your order is not going to get executed, and then you have to send another order. So that that's that's another reason I don't think for, it's great for the markets and that can change. In their IEX, in their website, they have a frequently asked question, and and I I'm gonna read it to you guys because I thought it was a, it was a great question. So they say it. Uh, so the question is, how does IEX calculate the NBBO, which is the national best bid and offer, and protect orders resting on its books from trading best based on stale market data? So how do they protect all these orders that aren't at that national best bid at that exact same time because they do have that 350 uh, microsecond delay? They said trading values, including exchanges, ECNs, ATI start pools, and their participants, including brokers, trading firms, and investors, access market data services at varying speeds. When a venue consumes market data at a lower speed than some of its participants, the venue may calculate pricing information at a slower rate than its own market participants. Depending on technological choices offered to admit by a participant, such a part participant on the venue may have more up-to-date information than the venue itself about the real-time price of a stock. And that's correct. That's how it currently is. If you have uh, faster cables, if you're a company that has faster algorithms, you will get information uh, faster than other people. That's correct. When a venue is slower than its participants, yes, the process changes in the stock prices and lets its participants have the fastest possible access to its matching engine through co-location. So if you have co-location, so if you have your data centers next to an exchange, that can be an advantage to you. The result can be the venue executing trades at a stale price, giving the faster trading participants orders an advantage at the expense of orders relying on the venue for accurate pricing. IEX attempts to guard against this scenario by adopting cutting edge technology, technology solutions. So they give three attempts to guard this scenario. The first one is, IEX's low latency ticker plant normalizes direct market data feeds from all protected U.S. equity venues. This currently allows the IEX matching engine to calculate the NBBO, which will then be used to price trades on our exchange in under 350 microsecond. Number two. And number two, I'll give my opinion on this one after I'm done reading it. IEX's POP architecture introduces a 350 microsecond communication buffer between the IEX matching engine and the IEX market participant. So you have their engine and then you have the participants participating uh, in their exchange. So the architecture is designed to prevent an IEX market participant that is able to calculate the NBBO faster than IEX. So let's say you have a high frequency trader that That cal that's calculating the national best bid and offer faster than IEX. So this high frequency trader has the price better than IEX. So IEX, let me let me see. So calculate NBBO faster than IEX from executing a trade. So it will not allow the high frequency trader from executing a trade against another IEX market participant. So if the high frequency trader does have the price before IEX is not going to allow it to trade at all with another IEX market participant on IEX before the IEX matching engine can calculate the price for all market participants at any given moment. But most importantly, following a quote change. So it's not going to let the high frequency trader trade with any IEX participant until everybody has the same price. The issue with that is that the faster one the, the, is the one who gets there faster still wins. That That's the issue that I have. With them saying that, it's pretty much saying, hey, the faster one still wins, they're just not, we're just gonna make them win. And, and I could be wrong with this, but from what I'm reading and what I've studied, it still seems like the faster one still wins. They Everybody is still getting that time their data at the same time well 
even if the high frequency trader gets their time before anyone else, they can't trade or execute that order until everyone else receives it. But what if he gets there before everyone else? Then he can just grab that information and trade it. And the last thing is additionally, IEX offers to its members an order type that uses a formula designed to protect the user of order type from trading at suboptimal prices based on microsecond and millisecond changes in the Croc Exchange order book. That is, it uses a predictive formula to protect the user from getting run over at a midpoint during a crum crumbling quote. So in, in, in midpoint uh, crossing, uh, certain high frequency traders can jump in a queue uh, or, or pretty much they're running so fast that they get a price and when it changes or before everybody knows it, they'll either buy or sell something else and sell it for cheaper or more expensive. And you know, this is, to explain this will take probably another video to explain, but it's something that they're preventing from happening. And for right now, I don't believe this is great for the markets. I do believe that, I just have to see how it goes for right now. And IEX, I like their philosophy, uh, the whole point that they want to make the playing field the same for everyone and they're using the latest technologies, great, smart people, and we'll see where they go from there. So right now, I'll say no, it's not good for capital markets. Can my opinion change? Probably, let's see on the future. I mean, they just started being an exchange, like an official exchange as of last year, and they're, I was checking, and they're, they're about, taking about one, one point something percent of volumes, of trading volumes right now, so that's not pretty bad. Uh, I mean, for you to be a successful ex exchange, you need a lot of order flows, and it's something that they're really trying to to tackle on. So we will see how they how they do in the next at least five years, if they if they get more orders, if more uh, if more fund institutions uh, go to them, and how the whole market reacts to this. If you guys have any questions, any concerns, want to know more, uh, let me know, and I'll be happy to answer them.